Mr. Constancio, the European Central Bank today published the Financial Stability Review. In the review, what do you concur, what do you conclude to be the key risks to financial stability at this point in time? And then also, why are those key risks broadly unchanged given that economic activity is very well? Yes, you are right to point to that uh, aspect because indeed the uh, situation of financial stability in the euro area uh, has evolved positively. And that is the result of the fact that all countries are now growing, the uh, imbalances, uh, both fiscal and external, have been reduced, so the euro area is indeed stronger. The point is that there are still risks out there. The first and more important risk uh, relates to the possibility uh, of a correction in the prices of uh, equities and bonds. Uh, which uh, could uh, uh, happen as a result of a revision uh, by uh, market uh, players of uh, risk premia uh, in what regards bonds and uh, a revision of uh, uh, growth uh, prospects in what regards uh, equities. These risks come mostly from outside Europe. Uh, and indeed uh, where we see that these uh, valuations are more overstretched is in particular in the US and so we may have an exogenous shock. So that's the first risk. The second risk has to do with uh, the vulnerabilities of the banking sector in Europe, m namely those related with uh, uh, relatively low profitability of our banks, which is related also to legacies of the crisis, but also to uh, potential uh, financial shocks and structural problems of different nature of our banks. And indeed, as we point out in the financial stability review, uh, the resilience of the euro area is now much higher. Uh, our situation is stronger, so more uh, prepared to sustain uh, uh, shocks uh, that uh, may uh, nevertheless occur. So um, listening to you, um, are, do, you, do you think or consider asset prices um, to be overvalued at present? I mean, the, the, the spreads in the global bond markets are compressed. Uh, meanwhile, the stock prices are on the rise. So what's your evaluation there? In Europe, we show uh, for the different asset classes that uh, the uh, uh, equities in Europe still uh, indicate a cyclical adjusted uh, price earnings ratio, which is an indicator of potential uh, uh, overvaluation, is still at the level of uh, uh, historical averages. For bonds, our different models to analyze and value uh, uh, bonds show that these valuations are uh, um, correct according to fundamentals. And the same is true in what regards residential uh, real estate, meaning housing, and in what regards commercial real estate, there is a little bit of uh, uh, overstretch uh, valuations. But in general, that uh, situation does not uh, portray a situation of generalized uh, risk of uh, overvaluations. In Europe, we may be subject, nevertheless, to contagion if there are uh, indeed shocks coming from the outside. There is no generalized situation, but there are pockets uh, in certain regions, particularly big cities in what regards housing, where we see some buoyancy of prices, and that has been addressed by macroprudential policies by uh, different countries. Mm -hmm. But um, so you're saying that there, there, there are no signs there of, of overvaluations, but sort of overall we see that volatility overall in the markets yeah. is almost abnormally low. Yeah. So what in your view would it take that this, mm -hmm. that the fluctuations, that they start increasing? It is true that in general uh, all these uh, markets, particularly equities and bonds, show very low volatility. And that is, uh, uh, if we look to history, is a situation where many times in your history suddenly a trigger will increase volatility and uh, then meaning the correction of prices that I mentioned at the beginning. That's the situation that could trigger uh, this. Also, uh, if the economic prospects would uh, uh, say uh, in the view of the market would decelerate in the US, that could also trigger an international shock 
that could affect uh, also volatility and valuations uh, in Europe. It's not monetary policy changes because uh, markets understand that the major central banks are going uh, about a new phase of monetary policy in a very gradual way.